What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I did want to give you another secondary infertility update. If you're new here, hi I'm Alessandra. We have a three-year-old son Kai who we conceived on the first month of trying very easily, smooth pregnancy. And now we're about a year and a half into our secondary infertility journey. So if you have not watched my previous videos, go back and watch those first for the full story. But to kind of sum it up, we've had three miscarriages since August of 2021. The first one was August. The second one was December, technically January 1st of this year. And the last one was this past August. Since then, I have switched from an OB clinic to a midwife clinic. We we're also recommended to go to a fertility clinic. We've had all of the testing done multiple times through now. Um, I've had a sonohysterogram and basically the only findings that they have found is that I have low AMH, which can mean that you just have a diminished ovarian reserve. The overall amount of eggs that are in my ovaries is likely less. Um, and they think the reasoning for the miscarriages was because that the eggs that were released those three times just were not good quality eggs. Therefore, your body sometimes, most of the time, tends to miscarry early. So all three of my miscarriages were pretty early. Um, the earliest was four weeks and the other two were around six weeks. The fertility clinic basically you know, went through all this testing with us and he said, you know, you can keep trying on your own since getting pregnant is not the issue for you guys, or you can go through with IVF. So things like an IUI or Clomid or anything else like that likely wouldn't be beneficial just because my issue is not getting pregnant. We get pregnant very easily. It's a matter of staying pregnant and getting that good quality egg. So IVF, they would be able to sort of test the quality of the eggs that they uh, retrieve from me and then put in a good quality egg. Hopefully that would result in a good pregnancy. So we will be moving forward with IVF um, probably in January, maybe a little after that, depending on what we've got going on now. So I actually went back to my naturopath that I saw right actually I saw her right before I got pregnant with Kai, a couple months before. Um, I had just coming off birth control. At that point, I was off it for like six months and I was trying to lengthen my cycles a little bit. My cycles were pretty short and like just normally my cycles are generally short, but still normal. So anywhere from like 21 to 24 days is normal for me. Um, so she actually helped me lengthen my cycle to like 25, 26 days, which lengthened my luteal phase. And she had me on some supplements for about two months before I conceived Kai. And at that point, we didn't even know that conceiving would have been an issue. So in my mind at this point, I'm like, you know what? It, it can't hurt to kind of go back and see just what she says. Disclaimer, if you're watching this, do not just go out and buy these supplements, first of all. It, Taking things that can impact your hormones specifically, if you don't know where your hormones are to start, can be a bad thing. It can make things worse. So it's important to get your own tests done, to get your own blood work done, to really assess what you've got going on first, um, and then move forward with supplementing. And this goes for like all of those hormone balancing supplements out there that a lot of like fitness and wellness companies have. Like do not just blindly take those things because they can sometimes make your cycles irregular, sometimes make your cycle symptoms worse and impact your fertility. Like if you don't need to take them, you shouldn't be taking them in the first place. So disclaimer there. Naturopaths in my experience tend to sort of just look at you as a whole, um, which is actually very similar to what we do with our health coaching, right? We obviously focus more on the lifestyle side of things, but she's looking at all of my blood work as a whole. And even though a lot of my labs have come back like within the normal range, normal does not mean optimal. So things like my vitamin D, for example, came back normal to my fertility clinic and to my midwife clinic standards. But when the naturopath is looking at it, she thinks that's super low still. So I was at like 37, I wanna say, which if you look at the Quest chart, like I'm green, like it's in the normal limits, that's just still fairly low. So she retested a bunch of stuff, um, not everything, just because I recently had testing done, but I shared that info with her. And she retested testosterone, she retested my DHEA pregnenolone, which is like the mother hormone. She also tested things like vitamin E, vitamin B6, I believe, um, and a few more things, I'll put them on the screen here. 
but everything came back actually in a really good range except for a few things. So we already knew my vitamin D was low, so she is having me supplement with that. She's also having me supplement with a supplement called CoQ10, which has been shown in some studies that it can help with egg quality. At this point, something like that cannot hurt anything. Um, and especially like whether we get pregnant naturally in the next couple of months or go through with IVF, I wanna make sure that I'm just doing everything that I can to produce the best quality eggs because that's gonna be important no matter what happens. So she's having me supplement with CoQ10. The other two that were borderline low were my pregnenolone and then DHEA, so both hormones. Um, and again, these were in normal range to most doctored standards, but she likes to see those numbers a little bit higher. So that's what we're gonna focus on right now. I'm gonna take these for the next six weeks. We're gonna retest after six weeks just to like get one more <laughs> lab test in before our insurance resets in January, see if that does anything for my AMH, um, and then we'll continue taking that regardless of if we are going to do IVF in January or maybe we get pregnant before then. But at this point, these things cannot hurt and it's good to know like everything else is in a good range and this is why it's really important for us to also get lab testing done. So that's the plan. Again, do not just go buy these because I'm taking them. Like make sure you're, if you are somebody who's watching this because you're struggling with infertility, go see a naturopath, find one in your area and get these workups done so that you can supplement with the right things too um so that's the update we'll obviously keep you guys posted right now we are actually not trying until we're giving it about like six to eight weeks before we actually start trying again just to let these supplements sort of kick in um ideally you want to give it two to three months so we're not in a super rush but we're gonna kind of assess how things are going early January, see what my labs are looking like, see just you know how we're feeling, and then we'll go from there. Overall, just feeling really good mentally, physically, like focusing on my training right now, nutrition is amazing, like just focusing on, on all the things that make me truly feel healthy, and it's these are things that can obviously help my fertility, but also just things that I would want to be focusing on for my overall health too, because your cycle health is directly related to your overall health, so. Let me know if you guys have any questions. You can comment this video or reach out on Instagram, but thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.